Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me over to your class at the University of Exeter, particularly many thanks to um, Olga, your uh, course instructor, who kindly invited me over um, as uh, she wanted me to talk a little bit more about the marketing chapter of our textbook, Principles of Management, Practicing Ethics, Responsibility and Sustainability. So uh, let's have a look how that goes. Here we are. So this is the textbook itself. You, uh, I believe you have seen the newest edition of it. Inside that textbook, it's about chapter 16, which is about marketing. Um, but overall, the textbook is one that takes a um, rather alternative approach to management in general and also to all of the different management disciplines like marketing. If you uh, look at this image here, um, the first association that you would have here wouldn't necessarily be marketing, I assume. Uh, you might, might describe many different things. You might talk about um, community engagement, um, cafeteria, um, lunch break. You might talk about um, maybe some kind of social work, but that's actually one of the core marketing activities of this company over here. Uh, of Bombas. So uh, Bombas is a uh, startup um, that has been quite wildly successful over the last couple of years. What they thought they wanted to do was to um, actually build an organization that uh, not only does, was market what, does what marketing usually does to connect uh, certain consumers to products, but actually to connect a wider type of value creation, not only for the customer stakeholder, but for other stakeholders as well. Uh, in this case, homeless people. So to connect that value creation of their organization to the actual people, the stakeholders who might extract, get value from it. Um, and that then includes many things that we usually wouldn't see in traditional marketing. So they actually went out in order to uh, uh, almost ethnographically live and, and understand um, the situation of homeless people and uh, what kind of needs they might have. And one of the main needs were really socks. Uh, you might think that's a very basic thing that uh, you, the, the normal customers we would target don't really even think about unless it's a kind of a fancy type of sock that we, um, we like for design purpose. But the very functional, um, basic importance of socks for homeless people was something that struck them. And they thought, okay, we will build a company around socks. And interestingly, um, the branding and marketing then becomes something very different. So it's not only about studying your customers in the sense of paying customers, but about all of the different stakeholders that somehow connect to their products. So what they did was actually to redesign that uh, now already uh, very well known one for one strategy. So this is where your customer buys one product for themselves and they basically donate one for somebody else, in this case uh, for hom homeless people. Um, but it also implies much, much wider operations in terms of how do you conduct marketing? What's the very basic basic ethos and purpose of marketing as well. So that's what we're gonna look at much, much more closer in uh, this session. So in the larger heading is really professional marketing and profession has always those two elements, at least one of the professionalized knowledge or competence, something that you have uh, and you're able to do that others don't necessarily have, but also professions, if you think about doctors, lawyers and so on, they do have a certain societal purpose to fulfill. And the idea then becomes about professional marketing being one that has that very professionalized, specialized knowledge, but also that um, serves the purpose of a profession. And that's actually very much in line with the uh, American Marketing Association's understanding of ma marketing. So you see things in there that you, in traditional marketing, wouldn't necessarily um, make an association to. So uh, a uh, uh, understanding of stewards as uh, stewards of society, marketeers at as stewards of society um, and executing the transactions uh, of the greater economy. So this um, very basic underlying function of marketing to make connections between value created and the people who can consume or benefit from that value of, of organizations and doing so with the highest ethical norms and ethical values. Multiple stakeholders responsibility, that's what it closes with. So what is marketing then? So the larger idea of marketing management would then be around the uh, organizational offerings and how to connect them to the different stakeholders. And we've already seen there can be many different 
offerings. And marketing uh, overall is uh, not only marketing management, but the marketing itself, as we typically uh, frame it, is the pro uh, practice of connecting that organizational value to the ones who can actually benefit from it, who can consume or can uh, realize that value. And then professional marketing becomes exactly this. So making sure that marketing is both. It's not only one for a good purpose. So as you see in um, the example of Bombas, but also it is one that does so in an ethically, morally responsible way. So good conduct of marketing, if you want so. So very basic ideas of not marketing to uh, to customer uh, to sorry, not marketing customers would be interesting, but not marketing to uh, um, uh, to minors, not not marketing to children. Uh, at least certain products you shouldn't. Then there are other products you shouldn't market at all. Uh, you should also take ethical decisions in terms of how you actually promote your product. Uh, if you're thinking about a flyer campaign that uh, creates local local pollution on a high level, well, that might be something you don't want to do. So this is all in the marketing conduct area. So what we will focus on, because uh, Olga told me that uh, one of the main purposes of this course is actually to understand the very local, but also the global trends that influences consumers, is um, that we will look at two parts of what you usually look at in, uh, in marketing. Um, so one of them will be uh, the market segmentation. So this is about the trends in, in the sense of what, what moves consumers, what kind of lifestyles choices in terms of mark, uh, of products and services are there uh, and then how can we actually connect to those through the marketing mix itself so we won't talk a lot about the marketing society area which is the third big area but focus more on the first two of them uh, and in the fundamentals of marketing area well one of the most basic things of course is connecting to the uh, consumer and uh, to many of the consumer behaviors or consumer practices, I, I prefer talking about practices rather than behaviors, uh, one of them being the intention behavior gap. So consumers actually say, we want to buy something or we want to behave a certain way or we want to live a certain lifestyle, a sustainable lifestyle, for instance, but they don't do it. So this is one of the most researched practices or behaviors in uh, responsible marketing but also in marketing overall. And then another one of um, very critical nature is impulse buying. So when we are trying to, in a supermarket, for instance, put the very uh, most enticing, but also the most unhealthy products right to the, uh, to the checkout area where people are waiting and they might just grab one of those Snickers or they might just grab one of those, uh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, whatever alcoholic products. Uh, and it's not good for them. But at the same time, those are the highest revenue products in the store. So if you only look at it through, through a commercial logic, a commercial marketing logic, well, then you want to put those exactly there. You want consumers to buy those. If you look at it through a responsible marketing logic, this becomes a problem. And you are actually in a very, very tense situation and have to navigate that tension. So overall, we, we often talk about segmentation, targeting, and positioning as uh, the core piece of the marketing process. We will focus mostly on the segmentation part because segmentation is where you're trying to understand the different consumer uh, groups or if you take that wider approach, the different stakeholder groups that might get value from my activities, my organizational activities that might realize that value. Uh, then targeting is about uh, how do I actually uh, connect or how, how do I uh, decide which ones of those different groups do I want to focus on? Positioning then is to build a offer and typically we talk about this uh, uh, the, the four piece or seven or eight piece depending on uh, how wide you want to make that that framework which uh, helped me position what that kind of value creation or the connection between value creation and value value realization actually looks like so we're going to focus on the first one and then look at uh, positioning respectively at, at the different piece price promotion and so on of marketing so market segmentation what are those different groups? So typically what we see in uh, uh, consumers generally, but very specifically in uh, sustainability or, uh, oriented or ethical consumption is that they're often very deeply caring consumers who want to buy the products that somehow are good, depending on what values we have. So those are the committed consumers. They're also the, the, the casual consumers, which we see it frequently nowadays and has become a huge group where they say, well, I would actually buy something sustainable. I would like to, I would buy an organic product. I would buy an lo a locally produced product. I would um, 
give up my car and use a car sharing service in order to reduce the environmental costs. Um, if it was just convenient, if it's no substantial effort, the casual consumers, and then there are the indifferent consumers, or sometimes they're actually even actively opposing consumers who say, well, yeah, anything sustainable or responsible just adds to the price. I want to have the cheapest product possible. And apart from that, often it isn't convenient. Those products are worse than the, the ones I would usually buy. So why would I buy a, a Nutella jar, which I often do, um, or, or a, 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 a nougat spread jar, not Nutella, uh, nougat spread jar, which, uh, which actually doesn't use palm oil, which is a little bit more bitter in, in taste. Uh, very, very often. Why don't I just buy the normal Nutella jar, which is full of palm oil, and which uh, very, very directly um, increases deforestation if every time I buy one of those. Because um, I don't like the bitter taste, so nah, 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 I don't like that stuff. So um, that would be the third group, which is indifferent or actually opposing it because they're thinking those products are not good for them and for, for what they want. But then, then beyond those uh, kind of more, more micro attitudes of consumers, we also have larger lifestyle trends. So we want to connect with marketing to those, uh, those trends. So one of them is uh, lifestyles of health and sustainability. So people who are actively looking for more sustainable, more ethical, more, more healthy products for themselves as well. Uh, lifestyles of voluntary simplicity, which I think are the future at least a desirable future. So lifestyles where people actually de-consume, they consume less, they move out of consumerist behaviors. So voluntary simplicity, I need less. So for instance, this picture back here, that comes from the charity shop. You might not like it, I do like it, uh, but for me, uh, uh, somebody else has used that. So there's no environmental costs to it and it still looks great to me, so why not? This plant over there, this was uh, um, uh, kind, kindly uh, a, a kind present of uh, a previous dorm that I lived in as a student because they closed the dorm. So why, why on earth would I actually uh, consume those things and uh, increase the, to the environmental product of consumption if I can just live simply, for instance, as one practice by recycling things that come, come from somewhere else. And then another great area is uh, bottom of the pyramid consumers. So those are consumers um, who are typically underserved by our normal uh, marketing activities. Often those are low income or by definition, those are low, are low income consumers, but we can actually spread that wider to other underserved consumption groups. Um, people who, who might, uh, might, need, uh, 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 might have different behaviors, which we don't really serve by how we market things at the moment. So and then we might have still another type of group, which is very important, which is activist consumption. And those are people who actively try to influence what companies do through their consumption. So there's this, this saying, uh, every time I spend a buck, a dollar or a euro or a pound or whatever, uh, I'm uh, making a vote, I'm casting a vote for, a, for the world that I want to live in. So the idea that every time we spend money or don't spend money, we're saying, okay, the practices of those companies are good or they are bad. And we are trying to foster, put energy, put money into the practice that are good. And that could take both forms. It could take positive targeting where you're saying, I actually want to buy from companies. I donate to companies um, who have those good practices. So I, I for instance, uh, like to use the search ending, uh, engine Ecosia a lot because they are planting trees apparently for every time I search as opposed to um, re uh, um, in, investing uh, the well not not investing as instead of rechanneling the uh, the uh, the margin they have the money they make um, to to their shareholders um, so very different way of uh, of consuming negative targeting then does the opposite so I don't buy certain things because I think the practices. That are that leading to me being able to buy that or to consume that, if it's a service, for instance, I don't like those, so I want to, want them to go away. So I reduce the uh, the support for them by not buying. And one really interesting example I, I enjoyed a lot last year was when um, the business to business. Um, uh, advertising customers of Facebook, a large group of them actually stopped their advertising campaigns because they did not agree with many of Facebook's practices. And one of those practices was that uh, actually by in, in, in very critical posts, for instance, posts uh, or, or live streamings of crimes that had happened back then, uh, all of a sudden you've got to add uh, of your company right next to it. So you don't want to be associated with that. And of course, you don't 
because indirectly or almost directly, you're fueling that kind of thing to happen because you're giving that company the money to operate. Good. So that was very quick about consumer behavior. So now let's see how can we actually target certain consumer groups through the marketing mix. And that needs to be quick because there's so many P's in the marketing marketing mix, the four, the seven, or the eight P's. I've seen up to 14 so far. But the larger idea is that those different P's, programs, performance, product, price, place, promotion, people, process, physical evidence, that all of those are what makes a overall marketing campaign or marketing activity or marketing practice. So what we will do now is um, that we actually run through uh, all of those and we'll have, we'll have, a, have a quick think. How do the, can those actually be done ethically, responsibly and sustainably? So the product, first of all, think for instance about Nike's uh, modest swimwear products. Um, one of the first mainstream uh, uh, Western companies in particular, although it's global, so what, what Western companies are there anyway, but um, the uh, very often what happened was that uh, it served to a typical, uh, I, I want to say um, probably Christian, very male dominated uh, uh, customer group, um, top athletes, um, but actually left out many other groups at the same time. So one of, uh, uh, one of the reasons for why this modest swimmer products uh, made the headlines was that it actually um, very, very actively made Islamic women's uh, uh, swim, uh, swimwear needs and generally sporting goods needs uh, one of their core lines of products. So that's quite a big move, although it looks like a small thing possibly. Then the price, uh, think about, so there's many different ways of, of uh, connecting to those topics with price, but one of them uh, I like very much is transparency in pricing, uh, because again, we want to know what our money supports. Um, but also there are other practices like uh, in pricing, for instance. So if you in price external effects, you could, for instance, in price carbon emission and make sure that every product is, uh, is increased in price or reduced in price, depending on how much carbon it emits. And you could rechannel that money into carbon offsetting. Well, carbon offsetting is something that's quite um, that's quite uh, uh, um, controversial anyway. But you could try to see if you can use that money. Uh, from in pricing, those external environmental or social effects, um, in order to actually mitigate those effects so that your product becomes neutral or maybe even something that's positive and has a positive impact. Uh, and one good example um, for the other practice, which I mentioned before, which is about transparency, is uh, what the company Everlane has been doing. Everlane has also been criticized a lot for other practices, but this is a good one here um, to actually show very, very explicitly how much costs are involved for the different parts of the product and uh, show the true cost for the company and then show, okay, this is our price. And they use that quite cleverly as a sales argument because they're saying, look, this is our price somewhere else. It would cost you 40 bucks, not 15 bucks like over here. Then uh, another important part is the place. So where do consumers buy your product? And uh, also the practices of buying in that place are very important. Do you have a bricks and mortar store? Are you a completely online based company? Uh, are your stores being, uh, being located in, uh, um, in communities of low income resources, for instance, because you want to make sure those, those uh, uh, low income communities have access to the products if they're important to them. Um, there, there's a big problem with redlining, we call it, where actually people in, uh, in lower income communities pay more for basic goods because the big retailers don't want to go there. So um, there's, there's a lot related to the place, which is important, of course, also in terms of logistics, environmental impact, if you are a, a delivery company or if you decide to primarily deliver your products, that becomes one of the biggest issues then. So place is important and promotion is important. And often we think, oh, marketing is all about just promotion anyway. It is important, but it's not the only aspect as we see here. So promotional push strategy would be where you are actually having your retailer trying to sell your product to, uh, to your customers, while the promotional pull strategy would be, and that's really important for sustainability products because often they're, they're new products that um, the mainstream retail outlets are not, not really aware of yet. Um, so the, the pull strategy is where you actually have customers uh, saying, I really like this product, I've seen it, where can I buy it? And very often actually those products get much, much easier into the big retailers because customers ask for it. And then we do have the big people that I mentioned. So uh, on the one hand, the, the people P uh, dominantly came up in the 60s, 70s, when, uh, uh, sorry, in the 70s, 80s, and 
in the early 90s when the service uh, offer became so more uh, so much more important so uh, moving from only products to products and service offers and uh, well then the people delivering the service become really really crucial for you but also there's the idea of people more generally in marketing whom are you employing how do they behave do they behave ethically do they have the mindset that you want to represent in your product offer as well uh, but then, then equally important of course the process once again process of delivering a service because the process becomes a value offer, um, but also at the same time, the process of marketing more generally in the process of your organization, because if your organization is actually one that, um, that claims to be sustainable, responsible, ethical, every small hiccup, every problem, every time that somebody in your, your organization does something that doesn't co connect to that ethos, you're in trouble because you're losing your branding. Um, so, and, and in terms of uh, looking at the, 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 the process overall, there's very interesting uh, learnings included in the blue planting of service practices. So for instance, what are the different components of my service? Can I look at them one by one and look at them from a sustainability responsibility and ethics lens and make sure they're okay? What are the important activities and do the same with them? Um, defining the big picture first. So what do I want to do with my product? What does my product or my service in this case actually do to society? Do I want to have that particular service? Maybe I should actually do something entirely else and I have to check that before um, because I might notice that the service I'm providing actually isn't good for society. It might not be good for the planet. So I might want to move somewhere entirely else from the beginning. Uh, and then very important, the interaction points. Where do I connect with my different stakeholders? And then the fail points, of course, because every time a service offer isn't delivered, well, basically your, your, your whole system is breaking down. And then again, from the service thinking, the physical evidence is very important. So uh, because you have a non-physical product, the service is something that you, um, that, that you deliver and it's basically gone, at least physically it's gone. Um, but at the same time, um, very often consumers or customers actually are very closely attached to the physical evidence. So originally the, 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 the idea was that, well, if you deliver a service, at least you need to have a very great store that people go into and love because that for them is the physical evidence of how, um, uh, how good the service is going to be or, or has been. But also in the sustainability context, we get a different type of physical evidence, which is not always surveys, uh, service related. Uh, so, for instance, I was uh, just on the weekend digging, digging up uh, 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 parts of my garden and I actually found a whole bin full of um, uh, uh, chocolate wrappers. So any kind of big brand. So apparently the previous owners of this, this house, they really like chocolate bars and they just threw them out or, or buried them in, in the garden. Yay! Great physical evidence for my brand, isn't it? Last year, there was an interesting survey also about um, who, which brand uh, is most prominent in the ocean. I think the Coca-Cola company won that race uh, by people counting the, the pieces of plastic that they found at beaches around the world. So that's a different type of physical evidence, one that we do want to get rid of. Marketing program, of course, uh, and very important in, in the program overall, we have that idea of integrated communication, of communication that connects um, to all of the different stakeholders, but also there's different types of integration, so different channels. So what, what's happening on YouTube needs to connect to what's going on in uh, even postal promotion, if you if you still do that, uh, to television promotion, external, online and offline, inter, external and internal. So there's this idea of integration, departmental integration. So um, consistently, consistency is so important. Uh, your marketing needs to do things that are consistent with what your operations management internally is co communicating. Stakeholder integration, all of the different stakeholders need to get a message that is consistent, not the same message necessarily, but one that's consistent, particularly if you're communicating about ethics, responsibility, sustainability, because every time you're saying something different to one stakeholder group from what you said to, to the other, while well, you are actually being accused of greenwashing directly. And then of course, walk and talk, what you do needs to match what you're saying. And one of my, my favorite examples really is um, uh, what uh, Iceland, um, not the, the chain Iceland, not the frozen goods chain Iceland, but the country Iceland did for the tourism industry after the volcano breakout uh, quite a couple of years ago. 
Um, so they actually, in, they, they use so many different communication channels, anything from unusual ones like scientific reports about how safe it is, uh, onto the more traditional promotional videos, they invited people over so that they could personally tell their experience about it, and so on, and so on. So very, very interesting, and uh, something that really worked for them. Good. So then the very last one is really about the performance. How do we know and how do we measure if our marketing activities are successful? So if we are marketing to so many different stakeholders, that becomes much, much more complicated uh, because every stakeholder basically needs a different performance metrics, uh, a performance metric. And traditionally, we have those sales revenue, brand equity, customer equity, yada, yada, yada. And then we come to more interesting ones, I think, ethical performance. So what kind of moral dilemmas, uh, ethical issues do we realize or for foster through our service and products? Environmental performance, what do they actually do? What kind of impacts do they have on water, on air, um, on, on soil degradation, if you're thinking about uh, agricultural products, for instance? Societal performance, what do they do to society? So think about the societal performance of a uh, tobacco company, for instance, or think about the 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 the, the popular vaping companies. Uh, comparing those societal performance is either one better, worse. Uh, how do we measure it? What metrics do we use, and so on? Good. So this is the the big picture already. Uh, I said before we're not going to talk a lot about the marketing and society because we don't have a lot of time left. Um, but actually, have a look at this um, this. Um, um, this uh, cloud, um, the uh, this word cloud, sorry. So um, you see there's many things on there we haven't talked about. Uh, so just uh, pause that for a moment, have a look what else is out there. So greenwashing we haven't talked about, for instance, we haven't really talked about um, the, uh, um, the, the marketing systems. We haven't really talked about critical marketing approaches and so on. So just have a look at, uh, at those and you will see there's much more in the book that you could have a look at and uh, probably you find it helpful for what you want to do. So once again, thank you very much uh, for inviting me over. If um, you have an opinion on, uh, on the book itself, what I would really appreciate also is if you could put just a quick review on Amazon, you can just click the one to five rating uh, or say a sentence about something you liked or you really didn't like, uh, would be very helpful because what I want to do is really to put that, uh, to, to bring that approach to doing marketing and management more generally differently in a better way for society and for the world to bring that out there. And the more people talk about it and the more people actually look at the book and uh, evaluate if they want to use it in the class, the, the more people I hope will practice responsible marketing. Thank you very much. I'm very looking forward to our discussion in the class just in a moment.